The Walking Dead has to be one of my favorite series of all time. From collecting all of the comics and reading them multiple times, to watching the first episode with my dad and brother when it first aired back in 2010, you can say that I have fond memories of the franchise. So, when I heard that a new Walking Dead game was being released, I got really excited. But then I played it. I played it, guys. And you know what? It was a straight up pile of garbage. I mean, uh, I don't even know what I played. What is that? What is this? Oh, oh God, is that supposed to be Carl? Oh. <laughs> From bullets being unable to penetrate invisible walls, to characters who died previously coming back to life in future cutscenes because the developers were too lazy to check on all options, this game was a nightmare from beginning to end. In this video, I'll be going over every single terrible thing that happened to me during my playthrough, so if you're the kind of person who enjoys watching a man's mental health degrade in real time, I suggest you keep watching. The game opens with Rick waking up in the hospital, and Jesus Christ, look at how they massacred my boy. I'm sorry sir, but that is a Carlos, not a Rick. But judging a book by its cover is the wrong thing to do, and although this book looked like it came straight from the PS2, I was holding off on my judgments. For all I knew, there was a masterpiece waiting for me at the end of the tunnel. Maybe it just needed a little time to cook. So, I made my way down the hospital hallway, took some pain meds, and came across the first zombies of my little adventure. I was able to slip by without getting bitten, but then, my escape route was cut off. I was at a total loss on what to do. But, oh. Oh! Would you look at that? A conveniently placed random cloud of smoke in the middle of the hospital hallway. Perfect! After dodge rolling my way out of there and securing my freedom, what little hope I had left for the game was immediately thrown out the window upon seeing the worst cutscene known to man. And by cutscene, I mean slideshow. It was during this part I met a man by the name of Morgan, and he told me all about the world and how it had gone to hell. At that moment, I had only one thought on my mind. He also happened to tell me that a sheriff's outfit was actually conveniently placed on the hood of a cop car just a few feet away, as if Santa Claus himself had placed a little gift for me. Huh. Would you look at that? With my newfound confidence, it was time to take out some walkers. The next area had a baseball bat waiting for me, and I got straight to work, smashing skull after skull. I was feeling good. That is, until the game soft locked me. As you can see, my current mission was to use my adrenaline to kill a zombie, and because my meter wasn't actually full yet, I had to take out a few more zombies to fill it. Alright, no problem. Except... There was a problem, because I'd already killed all the zombies on the map. Now, thankfully, there was an infinite zombie spawner right across the fence, but guess what? Because the zombies couldn't seem to be able to get over the hedge, I had no choice but to fight them on the very edge of the invisible wall. And when a zombie I was fighting completely forgot about me because I hit it on the head too hard, there was absolutely nothing I could do. The zombie was too far away for me to reach, and there was zero chance it was ever going to become aware of my existence again. Even taunting the poor guy didn't seem to work. Can't do that. Five minutes into the game, and I was already soft locked. Off to a great start. After a reloading checkpoint, the zombies seemed to be able to get over the hedge just fine the second time around, so after finally getting to use my adrenaline, I was able to progress. I made my way over to another cop car, called for help on the radio, and I just so happened to come into contact with a survivor group from Atlanta. Going there was the obvious next step. Unfortunately, Atlanta was a place that made me lose a lot of respect for Rick. Not only did he turn into a total spaz case every time he was about to die, Help! I can't do this anymore! He also screamed like a maniac anytime he was out of stamina. Ah! Having played enough of that skinwalker, I made my way over to the tank and was then teleported into Glenn's body. Or should I call him Glenn? Because that's definitely not Glenn. You guys know how it goes. Glenn saved the day, I was forced to play as Rick again, and after some epic battles with the undead, I made my way to a nearby rooftop. It was there I was faced with the first life-altering decision of many. You see, a man named Merle had been a little racist to another guy named T-Dog, and things had escalated fast. By the time Glenn and I got there, Merle was threatening T-Dog at gunpoint, and it was in that moment I had to make a very important decision. Either Either to defuse the situation calmly and talk Merle out of being a racist, or to handcuff Merle and leave him on the roof. Now, like any civilized human being, I decided to calmly defuse the situation by threatening to blow his fucking brains out. As much as T-Dog seemed to disagree with my methods, you kidding me, man? Threatening him actually worked. That man was safe now because of me. I had converted a racist into being a non-racist, and I knew that God was looking down on me with a smile. With my work there done, Glenn and I left to go be heroes somewhere else. And the moment we were out of sight, Merle attacked T-Dog and left him on the roof to die. Oops. Oh my god, it's Rick! Rick? Dad! Thought you were dead, Shane said. From now on, my family is off limits to you. After spending some quality time with my family and having a chance to meet the rest of the survivors from the radio, it was time to chill out and relax a little after such a stressful day. And 
you know, I was really starting to enjoy myself. Until later that night when the camp was attacked by a herd of walkers. And just my luck, little Carl was screaming for my help from across the camp. Being his father, I went over there to protect him. And when I did, I instantly regretted it. Oh god, Carl. Who is that? Who is that? That is not Carl. That is not my son. And what's with his goofy ass run? Oh my god, I... I don't think I love him anymore. I didn't think it was possible to lose the love for your own child, but it somehow happened to me. I was hoping my accidental grenade throw would rid me of having to raise that little freak, but unfortunately, he was stronger than he looked. The camp was lost, and we were out of there. As if that wasn't enough, when we went to take a little break on the highway, my demon of a son went and got himself shot. To be honest, uh, I wasn't really sad about it. Just more annoyed than anything, really. Still, to avoid looking like a heartless monster in front of the other survivors, I carried my son's body all the way to a nearby farm. There, we met a man named Herschel and his family, and wouldn't you know it, they were a family of vets. Unfortunately, Herschel ended up saving my son's life. I swore I'd never forgive him for that. Still, that didn't mean my son was out of the woods yet. If he was going to survive, he'd need antibiotics from the nearby high school. Maggie and Shane took it upon themselves to volunteer for the mission, and so it was off to the high school we went. At first, everything seemed to be going smoothly, and we were making good progress. But then, when the end came and we were being chased by a horde of zombies, I was faced with yet another important decision. To save Maggie, or to save the medical supplies. Now, either way, I'd be responsible for a person's death. However, who did I want to kill more? The super hot farm girl with her sexy southern accent, or the demonic possessed child that most likely ate hay in his spare time? Oh my god, it actually worked? Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, how do you like that, Carl, huh? See you in hell. Uh, by the way, Rick, I'm very sorry for your loss. After that, life got back to normal real fast. And you know what the best part is? Lori totally blamed Carl's death on Herschel. I didn't know why, but hey, I'd take it. It was then the game had a flashback sequence where Shane went back to the hospital to save Rick. Other than this just being a filler level, since... You know, the developers already created the hospital map, so might as well use it twice. There really isn't anything to note here. Well, except for the fact that this is where I came across my first invisible wall. Basically, what happened was that I was being attacked by a zombie, and the only option I had was to retreat. As I waited to heal up on the other side of the gurney, the zombie stood guard at the entrance, forcing me to take drastic measures. Are you kidding me? How is this game allowed to exist? I don't get it. Returning back to present day, Glenn came to us with a new problem. So... The bar's full of walkers. It was now time to play as Merle. Daryl and Shane were waiting for me to help out- Oh, oh my god! Walker! Walker! The barn battle finally started, and for whatever reason, Rick and the gang were just off on the sidelines, judging me. When I tried to kill them for it, I was met with yet another invisible wall, and even Rick seemed to notice it. It looked like the Lord was really watching over Rick, so with no other options, I went back to help Daryl. Oh my god! I mean, I was tempted to go over and assist him, but, uh... Fighting that massive group looked a little scary. Besides, Daryl seemed to be handling it just fine. All he really needed was a little emotional support here and there. Three hours later, Daryl finally wrapped it up and we were all ready to call it a day. And although the farm was safer now without the threat of the walkers in the barn, I couldn't help but ruminate on the memory of Rick dissing me to my face in front of everyone. Unfortunately, he needed to die. So, wasting no time, I invited Rick out late at night for a spaghetti dinner. What Rick didn't realize, though, was that instead of feeding him a nice meal of noodles and tomato sauce, I was gonna feed him a knuckle sandwich. But before I could shove my fist in any of his orifices, my ears were assaulted by two of the worst written and acted performances I've ever seen. You gonna kill me in cold blood? Take my place so you can screw my wife? Have my children? MY CHILDREN! Call you daddy? I'm a better father than you, Rick! I'm better for Lori than you, man, because I'm a better man than you, Rick, because I'd fight for her. The battle between Rick and I was fierce, but it was also super goofy. I mean, look at this. <laughs> What's going on? After smashing Rick's head in with a baseball bat, phase two started and we went at each other even harder. During this phase, zombies came out of the woodwork and attacked Rick, making it really easy for me to crack him over the head. Honestly, the fight was pretty one-sided and by the end of it, I'd barely even broken a sweat. I was the victor of that battle, meaning I was the captain now. When I got back to the farmhouse, I was greeted with a blazing inferno and a massive group of zombies, the likes of which I'd never seen. So after grouping up with as many people as I could find, we got out of there. This was where the prison arc started and it was this arc that had the most most jank. After clearing out the courtyard and making our way inside, we came across some inmate who decided to hole up in the cafeteria. The poor guy was begging us to let him stay. Carol didn't want to have anything to do with it, and she even wanted him thrown out. And 
You know, uh, I understood where she was coming from. After all, we'd spent the entire day clearing the place out, so it was only fair that we'd get to keep it. But you know what? I believed in him. This man, this inmate, sure, he might have been dangerous, but we had to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was only sent to prison because of tax fraud, or hell, maybe he'd been wrongfully accused and didn't even deserve our harsh judgment. We had to give this man a chance. So... Against Carol's wishes, I welcomed him into our group with open arms. The next day, he stabbed Carol to death and tried to overthrow the prison. It was up to me to save the day. I chased that man down into the prison basement and began the most brutal boss fight I've ever had. The generator boss fight. Basically, you go around the room turning on generators. That's it. Boo! I mean, I did end up fighting the guy, but it was just a copy and paste of the Rick battle, only worse because I couldn't see anything. With that psychopath defeated and the rest of the crew safe and sound, I was happy. Sure, Carol had suffered a slow, painful death, but her daughter was dead anyway, so it wasn't like she had anything to live for. The prison was ours, boys! But we needed supplies, and the only place to get them was a pitch black basement that was overflowing with the dead. And for whatever reason, the group decided that Herschel was the best one to be sent down there. The guy can't even dodge properly. He doesn't even know where he is half the time. Oh, it's so over. Oh my God, Herschel? Herschel, is that you, buddy? Yeah, go Herschel! Look at him go, yeah, woo! After finding the supplies, getting sucked into the back rooms by some big boy, and finally making it to the exit, it looked like everything was gonna be A-OK. -okay. Despite the stacked odds, Herschel seemed to make it out alive. That is, until his damn ankle was chewed on. Thankfully, someone was there to save him, so at least... Yeah, Herschel didn't make it. Next up on the to-do list was to go to the nearby warehouse to get some baby supplies for Lori. I was playing as Daryl, and as I made my way through that place, taking out enemy after enemy, I could hear some fighting off in the distance. When I went over to check out what was going on, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Michonne. She was being bullied by two enemies, and it was up to me to go and save her. Why am I not surprised? So yeah, Michonne is saved, we make our way back to the prison, and it's here we get a look at Michonne's backstory as she gets introduced to the town of Woodbury. We find out that Michonne wanted to join the town, but after seeing some odd things here and there, she felt unsafe. But because there were no weapons allowed in town, she was forced to invade the governor's home to get her katana back before leaving. Now, there wasn't much goofiness during this section, but during the stealth mission, this did happen. This'll distract him. Must have been the wind. And then near the end, I just casually dodge rolled into the nearby bushes in plain view, as if nothing was out of the ordinary, you know? N nobody saw me, apparently. Making her way over to the governor's wide open window, Michonne crawled inside and she was able to find her precious weapon. But there was also something else in the room. Not only was she a zombie, she was also the governor's daughter. At that moment, I had a very big decision to make. I could either spare the governor's daughter, giving him a reason to live while also preventing a future war, or I could kill his daughter for no reason. I killed her. After stabbing the governor in the eyeball, I told him that it was for his own good and that I was actually helping him. After emoting on his body, I left through the window and never looked back. Now, I thought that was that, but apparently the governor wanted revenge. And because we were sheltering Michonne, he wanted everyone at the prison killed. He showed up to the prison's front door with a tank the next day, and somehow, some way, he captured Glenn and Michonne. The governor was completely off his rockers and there was no way to convince him to back off. But. I did have one shot. In the final moments of the confrontation, I could either get Glenn or Michonne to appeal to the governor's senses and stop this war once and for all. So, like the genius negotiator I am, I got Michonne to lecture him on the importance of stopping the cycle of violence. Oh, Jesus Christ! Why did I think that would work? The all-out war began, and I was playing as the Lori Grimes. And for whatever reason, I was expected to go over to the tank and beat it with a crowbar. I'm not kidding. Dude, this game is so ridiculous. The tank couldn't handle all that crowbar action and the governor had to evacuate. And there, waiting for him on the ground, was me. Now, I gotta say, this was the goofiest boss battle I've ever had the pleasure of playing through in my entire life. Not only was the governor a complete lobotomite when it came to attacking me, he also started to attack the standing corpse of a walker I killed during the fight. The man's delusions were starting to ascend to ungodly levels, and just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, the governor lifted me up by my balls and tossed me into the fire. Luckily for me, some random explosion defeated him before I burned alive, and in his final moments, I gave that devil the exact same treatment he gave Michonne. During the final section, I played as Glenn, and my god, the developers really gave up by this point. I had to make my way through a fire maze that just so happened to perfectly form walls in convenient locations on a cement floor. Oh, oh my brain. Oh, this game is so stupid. But guess what? 
it somehow gets even worse. Remember how I killed Rick all the way back on the farm? I mean, I I've been playing a Shane this entire time, right? Well, apparently the developers forgot about that because Rick rose from the dead and was there for the finale. I'm not crazy, right? That's Rick, even though it says to protect Shane and Daryl. Is this real life? Developers, hello? H hello, you there, developers? Hello? So yeah, after protecting Shane and Daryl from a zombie attack, the game just ends with the group leaving the prison. And thank God, because I've had more than enough of that for one day. This is definitely the worst game I've ever played in my entire life, and it's so sad that it's based on one of my favorite franchises of all time. Six hours of my life down the drain. Six hours of my life I'll never be getting back. How depressing. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below, and maybe I'll play more terrible games. Or maybe I won't, because this was a total nightmare. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and click that bell, and I'll see you all in the next one.